Nuclear power stations produce electricity, which of course is extremely useful. However, they also make radioactive waste. Radioactive waste can come from a range of activities, including generating electricity from nuclear power stations, treating medical illnesses and conducting research. Did you know that radioactive waste can be harmful to us, either by irradiation or contamination? We're going to look at these two in this video. Irradiation is when a person or object is exposed to radiation without coming into direct contact with the radioactive source. The person doesn't make direct contact with the radioactive barrel, but since irradiation can happen at a distance, the person is still at risk. The damage to the person only happens when the person is in the area of the radioactive waste. Therefore, the person is only exposed to the radiation for a short time and so receives a low dose of radiation. Irradiation can sometimes be useful, particularly during cancer treatment. People are irradiated in an attempt to remove cancerous cells from their body. Irradiation is also used to sterilize surgical equipment or to remove bacteria from fruit in supermarkets. The objects don't become radioactive themselves and so are safe for use or consumption. Contamination is when a person actually comes into contact with the radioactive wastes. The person takes the radioactive source away with them and so are exposed for a longer period of time and consequently have a higher dose which can lead to more damage. Contamination can happen in a variety of ways, from picking up a source, to breathing it in, and to ingesting it. Contamination is used in medicine by injecting radioactive traces into the body to see possible blockages. Radioactive traces are also used to find leaks in water pipes. Radioactive waste can remain hazardous for a very short or a very long period of time, depending upon the different half-lives. Half-lives mean the level of hazard of the radioactive waste reduces with time. To learn more about half-lives, watch this video. If we start off with a kilogram of radioactive waste, that has a half-life of 100 years. After 100 years, we will have 500 grams of radioactive waste. After another 100 years, there will be 250 grams of it, and so on. Eventually, the amount of radiation will decrease until it reaches the same level as background radiation. For medical contamination that involves injecting radioactive sources, isotopes that have very short half-lives are selected. The half-life is long enough that they stay active for the detection to be done, but short enough that they reduce the low-risk levels as quickly as possible. Background radiation comes from artificial and natural sources around us that we experience daily. It is low in magnitude, so it isn't harmful. However, for some radioactive wastes to reach this low background level, it may take several thousand years. So just how harmful is radioactive waste? The answer depends on the half-life of the waste and whether a person is irradiated or contaminated. It's like asking how long is a piece of string. We've learned about the differences between irradiation and contamination. To learn about different uses of radiation, watch this video.